Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 80 Summer 44. So today, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about my Euro qualifying predictions. So before I even discuss about my Euro qualifying predictions, I think it's best that we educate ourselves of the format. So basically, there are 10 groups here. Each group is going to be playing round robin style. 10, um, 20 teams advance. The group winners advance, and the group runners up advance. There are three teams that are yet to be. The, there are three teams that are going to be determined by the playoffs. Okay. And those three teams will be determined by as follows from the page, okay? Following the qualifying group stage, the remaining three teams will be decided through the playoffs to be held in March 2024. Twelve teams will be selected based on performance in the 2020-2023 UEFA Nations League. These teams will be divided into three paths, each containing four teams, with one team from each path qualifying for the final tournament. The group winners in Nations League A, B, C will automatically qualify for the playoff of their league unless they've already qualified for the final tournament via the qualifying group stage. If group winners already qualified through the qualifying group stage, they will be replaced by the best, next best ranked team in the same league. However, if there are not enough, enough non-qualified teams in the same league, then the spot will go to the best ranked group win, group winner of League D unless the team has already qualified for the final tournament. The remaining small slots were, are then allocated to the next best team in the Nations League overall ranking. However, group winners of Leagues BC cannot face teams from a higher league. The three playoff teams will face will each feature two single leg semifinals and one single leg final. The semifinals, the best ranked team will host the fourth ranked, and the second ranked team will host the third ranked team. The host of the final will be will be drawn through the winner between the winners of the semifinal pairings. The three playoff winners will join the uh, twenty teams that have already qualified for the final tournament through the group stage. So, as I said, it's a very complicated thing, you know, and as I said before, that's why I needed to address that right now before we get into this. And I also discussed about which pl teams have already, which teams have a guaranteed uh, playoff thing through the Nations League, okay? So, I just wanted to clear that up for you guys and hope you guys do understand that and enjoy that. So, anyways, enough introductions. I think now is the time we talk about the groups, okay? So, now let's go ahead and start with Group A, guys. Group A, okay? Of course, Germany, as we know, are the host, Okay? So group A, okay, so let's start with group A here, and let me get my time stamp here, okay, so group A, so we have Spain, Scotland, Norway, Georgia, Cyprus, coming in last place, guys, I have is Cyprus, I think Cyprus for me are simply not good enough, Um, you know, I think they're just too weak, Um, I think they're going to be the weak team in this group, and I just don't see them doing well, Um, like I said, I may be, it may be a bit harsh on their path regard, but like I said, I just don't think they're good enough. Now, fourth was really tricky to call, and I went with Georgia. I, I would love for Georgia to make it. They have the um, playoff thing in their favor. It's just that I think this is too difficult for them. I think this is way too difficult a group for them. And, yes, they have that star man, uh, Kavarskelia. He's obviously the most recognizable name of the team. I just don't think Georgia have enough. I think it's going to be too much to ask for this team, and hence why I see them finishing fourth. Third in the group, I have them just miss off in, the, uh, miss, miss off in top two. It is Norway. I was really tempted to put Norway second, but the reason why I didn't put them second is because of the fact that even though they have some great talents like the likes of Odegaard and Holland, Sorbolet obviously comes to mind. It's just that I just don't think they have enough experience, and I feel like this team is just going to fall short. I think they're going to fall short and just miss off. Hopefully, I'm wrong, though, because I would love to see them in the Euros. Second place in the group is Scotland. I have Scotland just about to make it through. Um, you know, they have some good players. Obviously, the most recognizable name is um, Robertson, of course. We know how good he is. And he's a very, very good uh, left back. And obviously, you have Tierney as well that comes to mind. Um, and for Scotland in particular, I think they have a great chance. My only concern with Scotland is that their attack, I think, is a bit dry. I think they need to, if they can get more proven goal scorers in the team and they can be more consistent for a goal, then I think they could do something and maybe top the group. But I think that's going to be too much to ask. And, of course, they have at least a playoffs guaranteed. And then, obviously, Spain have far too much quality. I mean, the amount of players that you can name with Spain. Although they're coming off a big World Cup disappointment in which they obviously bowed out in the round of 16 um, to, obviously, Morocco. So, let's see how Spain rebound here. But I still expect Spain to do relatively well in this group, of course. So, um, yeah. As I said, let's go ahead and move on, guys. Let's go ahead and move on. Group B. Group B we have here. It is um, Netherlands, France, Republic, Ireland, Greece, and Gibraltar. Coming to last place, I have is Gibraltar. I just don't think Gibraltar is good enough. Once again, guys, they're just not simply. Uh, this is this is too much to ask for this team. Um, and yeah, I just don't see them doing much in this group. Now, fourth place in the group is I'm gonna have is gonna be. This is a really tough call to go for, but I'm gonna go with is Republic of Ireland. I think Ireland for me is just gonna. 
they have some good players. Obviously, um, you know, um, I believe McDoherty. He's pretty uh, pretty well known. Obviously, I just don't think this. I I just think they're gonna fall short. I just think they are. Um, you know, and I just don't really think they're consistent enough. I feel like they can get a result against France or Netherlands, but then they're gonna lose to like you know or get a draw against Greece. You know, like drop points against these kind of teams that they shouldn't be dropping to, and I think that's where this is gonna cost them. Uh, the third in the group as I have Greece. Um, Greece for me. Um, I just think they're going to get finished third. They do have the playoffs thing go in their thing, so they're guaranteed at least playoffs, so that could be something to make note of. Um, but I just don't think they have enough to qualify directly. I just don't think – I just think that's going to be too much to ask. And obviously, I think there's that guy from Liverpool. I think Samikas? Yeah, I think he's Greek. So um, look up for him, man. Look up for him. And obviously, uh, Monolos is still there, I would believe. And then the top two, man, I mean, it's going to be, um, for me, is I'm going to go ahead and say it's right now, Netherlands. Netherlands, for me, I, I think are going to get second. They have great players, obviously, Cody Gakpo. I mean, Ron Koeman is back as a coach. Um, Louis Van Hal is now officially uh, left the Netherlands coach. and become um, He's now retired, I believe, from coaching, I believe. And I, it's going to be interesting how this Netherlands does with Ron Koeman because I remember they were really, really good with Ronald Koeman and the, during the uh, Nations League in particular. Obviously, it was a shame he didn't get to see them for the Euros because – you know, the whole situation with the Euros getting postponed and Barcelona came in and we all know how that turned out, <laughs> you know. And it's going to be interesting to see how the likes of Memphis Depay, Frankie Dilla, and Cody Gakpo, Van Dijk, and Ball for Netherlands. And, of course, uh, World Cup finalists, France, are going to top this group. I mean, they're going to top this group. They just have too much quality in the team. You know, you have the likes of Dembele, you have the likes of Mbappe, then you have, you know, Uba Makana. The, the, the France team is just littered with talent. It's too good. Oh, by the Netherlands, you have at least playoffs guaranteed, so... If they somehow don't get finished top two, they can at least they can um they at least have that cushion for error, of course. Okay, Group C. Wow, a familiar matchup, right? <laughs> so, um, coming in bottom of the group for me is um, Malta. I, I just don't think Malta is good enough. I'm afraid to say I just don't think they have enough quality uh to compete in this, and so I do think they'll finish bottom. Fourth in the group is I'm gonna go is North Macedonia. Of course, they were so they made it to the playoffs of the uh, World Cup and they were agonizingly close to making the World Cup. Of course, they beat it Italy. You have to give credit to them. You know that wonder goal. Um, then obviously they got some good players. Dimitri. Um their goalkeeper for Rio Vacano is very good. Dimitri, I think that's how you pronounce. It. I might be butchering his name. Um, then obviously got some other players like Elmas comes to mind that plays in Napoli. I just don't think they have enough to qualify, unfortunately. Uh, to make back-to-back -back euros that's really unfortunate and then third in the group is i'm gonna have the ukraine ukraine obviously they were in the um they also were very agonizingly close to making the world cup they missed out um by a goal an own goal i believe in the um against wales and i just feel like for me this ukraine team they have some great players obviously zinchenko comes to mind then obviously you have the likes of you know um yeah, I mean, Chuck, you know, obviously some other quality players. I just don't think this, I just think Ukraine's just going to fall short, unfortunately. Uh, the second group is, I'm going to go with this Italy. I just think for Italy, they have been great. You know, they're trying to rebuild ever since they missed out on the World Cup 2022. They topped their nations as a group, which included it, England and Germany and Hungary, which is pretty impressive to note. And so I think that for Italy in particular, let's see how what, what Mancini can do with this team. Because like I said, they need to. They need to bounce back here. And I, I really like the players of, you know, you have the likes of Barella, who's been amazing. Don Rumo has been great. And then, obviously, it's going to be interesting to see how they, um, how they do post Chiellini. Obviously, I think Chiellini is retired now. Um, I believe Bonucci is still playing for them, if I'm not mistaken. And then, obviously, you, still, you have the likes of um, the young center back Bastoni that's come to mind. My issue with Italy is just they need a striker. They need a goal scorer because that's where I've been really concerned with Italy. And I think if they can get that thing fixed, then they're in a great position. And then, obviously, top of the group is England. England, of course. England should top the group. I know they um, played... I, I know England, um, obviously, did not top the Nations League group as we... Ex most. Um, I know they got relegated in the Nations League group, but I think England's going to bounce back. I think England's going to bounce back. Like Garrett Southgate, you look at the quality of players this team has. You know, Marcus Rashford, Bukayo Saka, who's been in incredible form for their club. I think they've been amazing. Then you obviously have Pickford that's been amazing in goal. Then, obviously, you have the likes of, you know, um, Stones has been amazing. Then, you know, there's some quality players in this England team. And let's be real. England should be qualifying from this. England should be qualifying from this. Group D. Group D, guys. So, coming in last place, guys, I have is Latvia. I just don't think Latvia is going to be enough. I don't think they're going to do much in this group. Now, I could see them maybe make things difficult and maybe get a draw in there and make things difficult. They could be the, um, a spoiler 
um, a team that prevents a uh, team from getting like qualification, but I don't really see them getting much more than like a couple of draws, and I just don't think they're good enough, to be honest with you. Although I wouldn't say, I, I don't think they'll be as bad as I'm, I don't think they'll be as bad as I make them out to be. I just don't think, I, I just don't see them being that good, okay? They're going to finish last, but they're not going to get zero points. They're going to get like, you know, maybe like three or four points, I would imagine. Now, coming in fourth place, guys, I have, it is um Turkey. Uh, I feel like for me with Turkey, man, I just feel like for me, this team has been kind of regressing. I don't really like what Turkey have done since the Euros. They've kind of gone down a direct, you know, direction. Obviously, they their big man has retired. Um, Yilmaz has retired. And I just like this Turkey team, man. As much potential as they have, they just always fall, they always just fall short. And I just don't really, i just not really been that convinced with this team, to be honest with you. They barely scraped through in the UEFA um, qualifiers last time around in the World Cup. And they lost to Portugal. And they should have scored that penalty. They should have scored that penalty, man. And, you know, it's it's ridiculous what they did. And like I said before, guys, this team is good. It's just that they always just fall short. They always underperform, man. They just underperform. And the third, this might come as a shock prediction, but I'm going to go with Armenia. I just feel like for me, Armenia for me is just, they just have the good players, you know. And Turkey do have the least of playoffs, though, so that's something to consider there. But um, I look at this Armenia team and that they may not have, like, the type of players compared to Turkey, but I still think they have some good players. You know, obviously, I think Deshaun comes to mind. Then you have the young, um, this, um, then you have Lucas Zlarin. And I just feel like, for me, this team is just, like, I, I just think that they're gonna, they could do something. You know, they could be the um, sleeper team that... That they could maybe surprise people. You know, there's always a shock in this kind of thing. And so, yeah, I would look out for Tigran Varshigin, um, one of Slovenian's best players. So, look out for him and look it out for him, of course. Okay. Um, and then second place in the group, guys, I have is Wales. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how Wales do because I don't know. I um, Because, obviously, Gareth Bale is now retired. So, it's going to be interesting to see how Wales can do post-Gareth Bale. And there is maybe a chance that they don't qualify. But I still do think Wales have a good team. And I still think Wales are good enough. You know, still so have the likes of, you know, uh, Hennessy is there in goal. And then obviously you have that, um, who's that guy? I forgot his name. Keep him more as well. You know, then you have um, Dan James as well. So, you know, I, I still think Wales should do good enough to qualify um, for the Euros. And then obviously top of the group is Croatia, guys. Croatia. The amount of talent they have in this team is insane. Zlatko Dodge has done a great job with this team. And Modric is still playing for Croatia, which is insane. This guy is like... Like, so, like, and is like 39, I think. Like, he's so old and he's like, you know, amazing, man. Like, he's he's still amazing for a country, which is amazing, you know. And then obviously, you have the likes of um, Brozovic, who's been amazing. Then you have uh, Kramaric, and then obviously Kovacic as well. And then I really want to see how Vardy does. And then you obviously have Orsic. Hopefully, Orsic gets more minutes because he was kind of, I think he should have got more minutes in the World Cup, in my personal opinion. And obviously, they come off the semifinal beating Brazil on penalties, of course. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and move on, guys. Let's go ahead and move on. Group E. Group E is interesting, guys. Um, so coming in bottom of the group, guys, is I'm gonna go with is um I'm gonna go with Moldova. Moldova for me is just not good enough, to be honest with you. I just don't think this team has enough quality to compete, unfortunately. I hope they um maybe they might prove me wrong because like I said, there's not really much expectations upon them. But like I said, I just don't think they're I, I just don't really think they're good enough. Um, to be honest with you guys, and I feel, think they're gonna finish bottom. So we'll see though. I could be um I could be wrong with this call. Next up, it is fourth place. I have it is um for Islands. For Islands for me is actually not that bad of a team, but I think the problem with Faroe Islands for me is that they're more of a home type of team. So I can see it being a very difficult for teams to beat them at their home. But when it comes to their waveform, I don't think their waveform is good whatsoever. So that's where my big concern is with this team is that. I don't think this team will be as bad as people may it, it may seem to be, but I don't think this team is good enough to qualify for Euros. They're just not good enough, to be honest with you. So I think they're going to finish fourth. Third in the group is Albania. Albania, for me, have some good players. Obviously, I think the most standard name is uh, Armando Broja. Obviously, he's the most well-known player um, from Al Albania, I want to say. Um, and so... It's going to be interesting how um, Albania do because I do think there is a chance that they could qualify in second place, but I just I just don't think they have enough quality to compete, unfortunately. So who knows? I could be wrong. There have been upsets before, but I'm going to go with them to finish, um, obviously, in um, third place. Uh, the second group, guys, I have it is uh, Czech Republic. I think Czech Republic, for me, 
have been a good team. Obviously, you look at the likes of Patrick Schick, who's been their goal scorer man. He's been he's such an important player for this team. And I also really like the guy um, uh, Suchek. I think Suchek's a really good player. Um, you know, he's not really having a good time at West Ham. You know, he's been amazing um, for them, obviously. And then you obviously have other players that come to mind as well. And then Kofal from West Ham as well. Then you got Barak as well. Alex Kral. You know, there are some good players in this team, you know. And I just feel like for me, man, they have a quality team. And they should be qualifying from this group, in my opinion. Now, first in the group, guys, is Poland. Poland, for me, have too much quality. They just have too much quality in this group. You have the likes of Robert Lewandowski, Zielinski. And then you have some other quality players. My only issue with Poland is that despite the team being great on paper, it's just the team doesn't really play well, you know. And that's my big concern with this Poland team is that this team is just not fundamentally cohesive enough. They're, they're like, they have these big name players, but they just don't play well as a unit, which is my big concern. But needless to say, they should have enough quality in this group to compete, but it remains to be seen how they're going to be doing the Euros. Because like I said before, guys, Poland, they always, they always let you down, man. They always let you down in major international tournaments. So, yeah. Um, next up, Group F. Group F, guys. So, uh, we have it here. This is a big one. This is a big one. Coming in last place, guys, that is Estonia. Estonia, for me, are just not good enough for this group, to be completely honest with you. And the fourth, obviously, is Azerbaijan. Once again, another not really good enough for this group, to be honest with you. And now, we have the top three, where things are very interesting, guys. And I have some hot takes with this group, by the way, guys. So, I'm not going to go with your traditional groups because you guys have been seeing many of the groups i've been it's been fairly predictable to say but this one i'm going to change things up a bit third in the group i have a sweden now i was almost i almost reluctantly put sweden in the top two but my concern with sweden is just that they haven't been great ever since the euros they just haven't been great they haven't been great defensively they look in shambles their attack is just not that clicking and they just got relegated to league c guys league c that is disgraceful i'm sorry you know, and they have some good players, man. You know, I'm looking at the likes of Kulaseski, Forsberg. You know, you also have that good players there. And it's just that the Swedish team, man, they should be doing much better than this. And I think it's a very difficult group for them. And yeah, I don't see them qualifying. However, that being said, there is potentially a chance because Belgium and Australia, Belgium and Austria haven't really been that amazing either. So I wouldn't be surprised, but I'm not putting my money on it. I think Sweden will finish third. Second in the group, as I have, is Belgium. I feel as though this Belgian team, there is a potential possibility they miss, miss out. I've just not been convinced with Belgium. I feel as though that they have to move on. And they did get their new coach, who looks promising, although not really much is to be known of him, obviously. And I think the issue with this Belgian team is that there's a lot of uncertainty with this team. There's a lot of uncertainty with this team. Uh, that Their new coach is, let me actually see if I can find the new coach. Let me see if I can read that for you guys. So the new coach right now is Domenico Tetsko, former RB Leipzig coach. So he's not really that, it's not really, it's a very interesting hire. Um, And my big concern with Belgium is that they just keep playing the old guys. You know, under Roberto Martinez, they just kept playing the old guys. And so maybe with the new coach um, under Tetsko, they could be playing the, the younger guys because obviously Eden Hazard has retired. He's, no, uh, he's officially um, done with Belgium. And it's going to be interesting to see how the likes of, you know, uh, Lukaku, Mertens, and then obviously Trossard. I think Trossard, for me, needs to be given more of an importance to this team. And then obviously you have players like Vanekin. And then, you know, you got Dead Donker, Carrasco, KDB. KDB had an awful World Cup. He needs to turn up on this kind of games. And yeah, because for me, man, if Belgium don't really fix up their things, they, there's a possibility they don't even qualify for the Euros, which would be pretty embarrassing, guys. It would be pretty embarrassing for a, for a nation of that kind of talent. Uh, the first in the group I have is Austria. Yes, guys, I actually have Austria to finish top. And I know it might seem like a crazy call to say, and it probably is, but I just feel like this Austria team, they're just looking good. I really like their new coach, obviously former United coach, obviously uh, Ralph Ragnick has, has done a great job with this team. And the thing with this Austria team is that they don't really have those kind of players compared to Sweden and Belgium, but they have, they just, they're just playing well. Look what they did in Group A, man. They came and competed in that group with consisting with France, Croatia, and obviously, um, Denmark, and I know, um, um, what is it called? I think they, um, they still, I know they still finished bottom, I think, but they still put up a really good fight. They still put up a really good fight, and that should be worth noting. And that they put up a really competitive fight, and they got those big wins over Croatia win, which was crazy, especially on the road, you know. And so I just feel like for me, this Austria team, man, obviously the most standout name is David Alaba, of course. 
who is their um, most recognizable player, of course. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out, guys. It's going to be very, very interesting in that regard. Now for Group G, guys. Group G. Uh, where are we at? Group G. So, Group G, man. Group G. Okay. Coming bottom of the group, guys, is I have it is Lithuania. I just feel like for me, Lithuania, for me, is just not good enough for this group. To be completely honest with you, I think they're going to finish bottom. And then fourth I have is Bulgaria. Well, you know, kind of similar to Lithuania. I just don't really think they're that good. They're a little bit better than Lithuania, I would say. Uh, but yeah, they're going to finish third, fourth. And then Montenegro. Now, Montenegro, I actually could see them maybe spoil the party. Because I remember they did make a comeback against the Netherlands in the World Cup qualifiers. And I feel, I think Savage... Stefan Savage, an Atletico Madrid player, I think plays for this national team. And so, he's probably their best player. But like I said, though, Montenegro is just going to fall short. Second in the group I have it is Serbia. Serbia, Serbia, Serbia. They have to make the Euros. I'm, I'm going to say this right now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real with you guys. If Serbia do not make the Euros, I'm sorry. They're officially jokes. They're officially a joke. And you guys know I tend to be respectful. I tend to, you know, give every nation their props and you know you know criticize them when necessary but this will be a huge embarrassment you have to qualify from this group this is a group that the, serbia should be qualifying from and if serbia do not qualify from this group i'm sorry i i i i i i'm i i we're gonna ha i'm gonna call them they're gonna be jokes fc they're gonna have to be called jokes fc because i look at the talent on this team that they have you have the likes of milinkovic you have the link likes of milinkovic savage you have the likes of Tadic. you have the likes of um, Vlaovic, you have the likes of these kind of quality players. They even beat Portugal atop the World Cup qualifying group and qualify directly to the World Cup. There is no excuses for the Serbia team. And I know people are going to tell me, oh, Serbia haven't made the Euros in such a long time. But they made the World Cups. They made the last two World Cups. Yes, I know they were not good in the World Cups, but they can at least qualify for these World Cups. Serbia, man, you have to make the Euros. You simply have to make it. It's been far too long since they made the Euros. I think the last time they made it was 2000. It's a far cry. We need to see them back in the Euros. Please, Serbia, do not let me down here. And the first in the group, guys, I have is Hungary. Hungary, for me, are just such a good team. I like how this way this team competes. And look what they did in the Nations League, man. Everyone thought they'd be the whipping boys in that group of England, Italy, and um, Germany. They proved everyone wrong. They even did the double over England. And I just think that for me, this team is great. You got the likes of Shrobozai, Shazli. Then you have the likes of Willy Orban as well. Then you have Gulashi, great goalkeeper. And remember, they competed very well in the Euros. Last Euros. Remember, they finished um, uh, fourth in the group. And I know they got eliminated. But they put up good fights. They got two points in the group. A point against Germany. A point against uh, France. They only lost one game. And they only went down 10 minutes in the Euros. So, for me, Hungary, they, sh they should be able to top this group. Well, very least second, but they should, um, in theoretically, in my opinion, top the group. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you guys, Serbia do have the playoffs, at least. Or Group H, guys, we're winding down, guys. We're winding down to our last couple of groups. <laughs> I know it's been a long video, guys. Long, long video. So, where are we at? 23, 26. Jeez. Okay. So, Group H. So... Coming in last place in the group, guys, is San Marino. Guys, I don't even need to explain this. They're one of the worst nations in the world last. Okay, then I'm going to go with in um, fifth place. Is I'm going to go with is Northern Ireland. I feel like this Northern Ireland for me, um, I just feel like for me, they're just not that great. And I feel like they're going to finish the fifth. Um, like I said, they don't have enough quality players to compete in my opinion. Although, like I said, though, they did hold Italy to a draw, which... They might be able to do in this kind of group. You know, hold a nation to a draw. But I don't see them winning. I don't see them winning. I don't see winning. I don't see them winning many games. Beyond San Marino, of course. The fourth the group is I'm going to go with this Slovenia. I feel like for me, the Slovenian team, they have some good players. Obviously, Oblak is their most recognizable name. But obviously, I just don't think the Slovenian team is good enough, unfortunately. And yes, third, I'm going to go with the surprise pick here, guys. And go with Kazakhstan. I think Kazakhstan, for me, have really improved... Ever since that World Cup drumming loss they had to France, this team has been playing really well. They've been really tough to play at home. And they actually have the playoffs. So that could be a huge, huge factor for them. And to maybe qualify through the Euros to the playoffs. And the second of the group, guys, I have is, um, Finland. Finland, for me, I just think they have a great team. I look at the players that they have. You have the likes of Puki, Radecki. Then, you know, they may potentially have Dua, um, that guy. Then, obviously, you also have 
Um, uh, Rebo as well. Not Rebo. Who's that guy? I forgot his name. Not, uh, is it a, wait, hold up. Is it Rebo? No, no, no. I, wait, let me check. Let me check. Who's that guy? It's like a really good player for them. He plays at, um, um, plays at Rangers, I want to say. Oh, uh, Kamara. Glenn Kamara. Yep, Glenn Kamara. That's the guy I was talking about. Yep, Glenn Kamara. Not, not a Rebo. Not a Rebo. Forget what I said there. But, um, yeah, then you have Marcus Force as well. I mean, they have some good play quality players, and I think they should be able to get second place in this group. On the top of the group, guys, is obviously Denmark. After the disappointment of the World Cup they had, I expect them to qual. I expect them to top this group with ease. You know, they have the quality players of Ericsson. You know, I like what Casper Hillman has done with this team, but he has to improve. You know, then you also also have, you know, obviously you have um Casper Schmeichel as well, Christensen as well, a quality team. Like I said, they should be top in this group. Okay, now time for the penultimate group, Group I, guys. Group I, jeez. 2559. This is going on for a long time, guys. Coming in sixth place in the group F is Andorra. Andorra for me is simply not good enough. Then fifth in the group is I'm gonna go with is Belarus. Simply not good enough. Fourth in the group is I'm gonna go with this Romania. I think Romania for me is gonna come narrowly close, but I think they're gonna miss off. I like what they did in the World Cup qualifiers. I believe they finished um in Germany's group. I think they finished. Where did they finish? I have to double check. It's been a while. I think they finished like I want to say like fourth. I want to say, and um, they were in a good position. I think so. Let me go ahead. And actually, ch let me see if I can see here. Um, where is it? Da -da 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 -da. Okay, where is it? I'm trying to see. Sorry guys. Um, wait, hold on. Let me just sec. Actually, let me just do something right here. Uh, Germany versus Romania. So, let's look at this. So, yeah, I think for Romania, I think they have a good chance to maybe, you know, pull off, maybe, get, you know, get third potentially. But I just think that for me, they're just going to fall short, I just think, you know. And, um, yeah, they have some good players. Um, You know, obviously the most recognizable name, obviously, is, um, let's see, then you have Hagi, Radu. You know, I, I just feel like for me, this, um, this Romania team, I think they're just going to fall short. I think they're going to fall short, guys. And, yeah. I guess, um, third of the group is I have Kosovo. I really think this Kosovo team is no joke. Uh, I like what the players that Kosovo have, and I've been kind of a, I've been kind of high on this train for an, now a while now, and I feel like they need to perform now because there's all this talent you can have on your team, but you have to perform at some point, you know. And I look at the players that they have. You have the likes of Ramari playing at Napoli, of course. And then you obviously have Rashika as well playing at Galatasaray, you know. And um, they just have some good players, man. Moriki as well playing at Mallorca. And I think it's about due time that they actually perform in this kind of stage because they've always been kind of a letdown. They've always kind of underperformed, you know. And the second of the group guys have is Israel. Israel, for me, have been amazing. I really like this Israel team. What they did in the World Cup qualifiers was commendable. The fact that they finished third just behind, um, what is it called? I think Scotland, I think. Yeah, I think they finished in, yeah, behind Scotland and above Austria is commendable. Um, obviously, their big guy, Zahivi, is no longer with them. He's obviously retired. And they still have some good players. You know, obviously, there is this guy. Um, I forgot his name. I think he's at um, Makibia Hafia. He's probably one of their best players. And so, look out for this guy. And like I said, guys, I think Israel could actually do something here. And I, I think they're going to qualify. I think they're going to qualify in second place. At the top of the group is Switzerland. Of course, Switzerland for me, man. Yeah, they're just too good for this group. They're just way too good. I look at this team. You have the likes of Shakiri. You have the likes of Jaka. Then you have the likes of Sommer as well. And Bola as well. This team is stacked in talent. And they should be qualifying. They should be qualifying with these. And now, the final group, guys. The final group. Group J, guys. We wind it down to this, man. If you made it all the way to this video, if you made it all the way this far, please comment down below your thoughts because this is coming up. I've been, it's almost been a half hour, and I usually don't record these kind of long videos, but you know, it's worth it's worth it, man, for the Euros, man. You know, so Group J, guys. I'm um, coming in last place, guys. Is Liechtenstein? Liechtenstein for me, just simply not good enough. Uh, then um, I'm gonna go with fifth place. Is I'm gonna go with is Luxembourg. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go with this Iceland. Iceland for me. They have the nice team. They have some nice players, but this team has just fallen off. Ever since they qualify, ever since the Euro World Cup, they just haven't been the same. This team has been on a massive downward trajectory. Fourth in the group is I'm gonna go with is uh, Luxembourg. I think Luxembourg is gonna finish fourth. Um, I think they're gonna just fall short. 
they have some good players, uh, but I think they're going to fall short. And obviously, they played against Portugal quite before on numerous occasions, of course. Third in the group, I'm going to go with this Bosnia Herzegovina, which may surprise some of you guys. Um, and the reason why I believe they'll finish third um, is because of the fact that as good as the team is, I feel like this team is getting too old. Like, you know, you look the likes of Pjanic, that's still up there. And then obviously, you have the likes of Dzeko. You know, and I just feel like for me, this Bosnia team is that as good as the talent they have, I just feel like this team is just going to regress. I don't think this team is that. I think this team is kind of like declining. And uh, let's see, though. Um, you know, they could maybe surpri surprise me uh, in qualify, of course, but um, I don't think they will. I don't think they will, personally. And the second in the group, guys, I actually have Slovakia. This Slovakia team, for me, have some quality players. I, I look at the likes of, obviously, you also you have the likes of uh, Skriniar, who is amazing for this team. This guy is incredible for this team. Then you have the, obviously have the likes of... Um, um, you also have the likes of who else comes to mind. I'm trying to think some other names. You got oh Hamzik is retired. That's a big big blow. He could have been very very vital here. Lobotka has been amazing for Napoli. Look out for him. He's an amazing player. You know. Uh, then yeah, I mean I just think that for this um, this team man they have some good players and I feel like they could surprise people despite their uh, low ranking here. And yeah, then you have Dubraka as well who's a good goalkeeper. And yeah, I just feel like for me this um this team is gonna finish second. And then top of the group, guys, is Portugal, of course. Now, I'm, I'm keen to see how Portugal does with Roberto Martinez, which just sounds so weird, by the way. He's our new coach, by the way. Obviously, um, who's the coach? Um, uh, Fernando Santos has left. So you still have the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Joao Felix, and then Rafa Leal. Then you have the likes of, you know, um, Ruben Diaz and, you know, et cetera. So much talent in this team. And Portugal should honestly top this group. So that's it for today, guys. That's all of my Euro qualifying predictions, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this mouth pack video. There's so much to cover. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you made it all the way this far, please let me know in the comments below because this took a long time for me to do. Also, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you made it this far, please also consider hitting that like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. Comment over your thoughts in the comments screen below if you're watching on the replay. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. And um, yeah, wait, why don't we say replay? I mean, I'm going to try to probably premiere this, but um. Comment below your thoughts if you're all watching in the live chat as well. So, you know, like, and like, share, and subscribe, of course. And also, consider becoming a member of the channel to get access to members' videos and members' streams. And so, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.